So in this video, we're going to talk about palmitate synthesis and the actual reactions of it. Before we can actually have the reactions occur, though, we need to have what's called the priming of acetyl-CoA and melanyl-CoA, which is essentially the attaching of acetyl-CoA and melanyl-CoA each to the acyl carrier protein of the fatty acid synthase complex. If you recall, the, AC, the acyl uh, carrier protein of the fatty acid synthase, what it does is it carries the substrates from catalytic site to the to, to catalytic site and to the next one and to the next one. Um, but So before that can happen, we need to actually attach the substrates to the actual ACP so that that can happen. So the two that we're going to do that with are acetyl-CoA and melanyl-CoA. So both of them have the coenzyme A's attached via thioester linkages. So all we're going to do is replace that thioester linkage um, to acetyl-CoA with a thioester linkage to the acyl carrier protein. That's really all that's happening here. We're taking an acetyl-CoA and turning it into an acetyl ACP, which just frees up the coenzyme A, and now we have the acetyl group attached to the acyl carrier protein. So that um, that reaction is catalyzed by acetyl transacylase. Why is it called that? Well, because it moves this acyl group, specifically the acetyl group of acetyl-CoA, over to the acyl carrier protein. Same exact thing happens with melanyl-CoA. We're just moving the melanyl portion to the ACP, and that's catalyzed by malanyl transacylase. Before in the fatty acid synthase video, this was called AT, and this was called MT, and you'll see the, the rest of the enzymes later. I might not mention them as by their abbreviations, but uh, you should be able to recognize them if you paid attention to the other videos and pay attention here. So once we have the acetyl ACP and the melanyl ACP, we basically have the acetyl group and the melanyl group both attached to the acyl carrier protein. So we have our substrates that are attached. So these two are now primed. They are primed. They are ready for fatty acid synthesis. Now, just as a side note, this um, doesn't have to occur with acetyl-CoA and melanyl-CoA. For odd-numbered fatty acids, what can happen is instead we get it instead of um, Instead of acetyl-CoA, we have um, propanyl-CoA, which is a three-carbon molecule. You'll remember propanyl-CoA from, um, from the beta-oxidation of odd-numbered fatty acids. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that if, um, if we had started with a propanyl-CoA and a melanyl-CoA instead of an acetyl-CoA and a melanyl-CoA, we'd get a propanyl-ACP and a melanyl-ACP. And we have the condensation reaction, we'd have a three-carbon molecule joining with a two-carbon molecule to make a five-carbon molecule that we'd start with, as opposed to what we're going to get here, which is we're going to get a four-carbon molecule that we'll start with. So this is for odd-numbered fatty acids, just as a side note, but we're not going to worry about that too much in this video. Okay, cool. On to the reactions. The actual four steps. And again, I call it beta reduction, and hopefully that'll make sense to you as we go through this. Okay, so we've got acetyl ACP, malonyl ACP, and they're ready to go, they're primed. Now they can undergo the four steps, the actual um, beta reduction steps. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect this acetyl group, this acyl portion, specifically the acetyl group, to this portion of melanyl ACP to get acetyl acyl ACP. And this carboxyl group here on melanyl CoA leaves as a carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is the condensation reaction because we're forming a carbon carbon bond between this portion right here, right, and this portion right here, the acetyl portion. So the carbon carbon bond that we make, this condensation, is right here. That's the bond that we made right there. Okay, that's the carbon carbon bond that we formed. That's the condensation reaction. So now we've got a four carbon molecule called acetyl acetyl ACP. This reaction is catalyzed by acyl malonyl ACP because what it does is it takes an acyl group or sorry, acyl malonyl ACP condensing enzyme also called ketoacyl synthase. So this was called uh, this was the CE in uh, in the previous video. So we, why is it called this acyl malonyl ACP condensing enzyme? Well, it takes the acyl group from from here, right? And it takes the malonyl ACP group 
and condenses them to form this molecule. This molecule is a ketoacylsynthase. Specifically, it's a beta ketoacylsynthase because at this beta carbon, we have a ketone. So this, this acetoacyl ACP is a beta ketoacyl group, a beta ketoacyl ACP, because it's still attached to this ACP. So now this is going to be taken to the next site where the next reaction happens, where the first reduction happens. All right, so this first reduction of this acetoacetyl ACP, this four carbon molecule here, this four carbon beta ketoacyl ACP, is going to be turned into this, delta, uh, this D beta hydroxybutyryl ACP via the first reduction reaction. So we're going to re require the reducing agent, NADPH. That's going to go to NADP plus. And this reaction is catalyzed by beta ketoacyl ACP reductase. Well, why is it called that? Well, we've got a beta ketoacyl ACP right here as our reactant, and it's going to be reduced, right? So reductase. Reductase, it's acting on the beta ketoacyl ACP. And we get this uh, D beta hydroxybutyryl ACP. I didn't actually put like the wedges and dashes here to indicate D. That's just because I'm lazy. I apologize if that's not good for you, but um, the point is that this is the, the D form of this uh, hydroxyacyl ACP. So that's the first reduction reaction. Then, then we've got the dehydration reaction. So we're going to lose water in this next step. So we're going to lose and actually, before I go back, I specifically should probably mention this, is that this beta, this beta carbon goes from being a carbonyl, right, a ketone, to uh, an alcohol, right? So that's the actual reduction there. The beta carbon was reduced, hence beta reduction. I'm sorry I didn't mention that before. Anyway, um, now we're going to have the dehydration reactions. So we're going to lose water. We're going to lose this OH and one of these H's as water. And to get this enoyl ACP. So this reaction is catalyzed by beta hydroxyacyl ACP dehydratase. Well, dehydratase makes sense. We're losing water, dehydration. It's acting on beta hydroxyacyl ACP. At this beta carbon, we have a hydroxyl group, and then the rest is the acyl ACP. So it's acting on this to give us this enoyl ACP. Okay. So now we have this enoyl group, and we're going to have our final uh, reaction of the round, which is going to be the second reduction. So second reduction means we're going to need a reducing agent, NADPH. That's going to go to NADP+. And this is acting on this enoyl-CoA to give us this butyryl ACP. This is catalyzed by enoyl ACP reductase. Well, it's a reductase, hence the reduction reaction, and we're specifically reducing the beta, the beta carbon here. Um, or really, just this, uh, this molecule, but specifically the beta. Um, and this is acting on the enoyl ACP. This is an enoyl ACP. So uh, we're reducing this, and that gives us this butyryl ACP, which is essentially an acyl ACP. So notice, what is this? This is just uh, CH3, CH2, CH2. And then this uh, this group here. So this is an acyl group attached to this ACP. Specifically, it's four carbons, so it's butyryl ACP. But this is essentially a four carbon fatty acid, right? This is a four carbon fatty acid that's just attached to the ACP group. So um, what are we going to do with this? Well, now this acyl group, this acyl group here, is going to be attached to the next malonyl CoA. Right, this malonyl CoA or the malonyl ACP, excuse me. And again, this this carboxyl group we will leave as a carbon dioxide, and we're going to join these two, connect them, and we'll get this part coming from the malonyl CoA or the malonyl ACP. Messed that up again, sorry. <laughs> um, and this part here, this the rest of this coming, this these other four carbons are coming from um, from the butyryl ACP, the acyl CoA. So this is acyl malonyl ACP condensing enzyme ha allowing this to happen. So now we have a 6-carbon keto acyl ACP. So now the, re the reactions repeat, right? The four, the four reactions, which is the condensation, the first reduction, dehydration, second reduction, all those occur. And after that second round, we'll have a 6-carbon fatty acid attached to the ACP. 
In this case, it would be hexanyl ACP. So these four steps, these four reactions, right? These the, the condensation, the first reduction, the dehydration, and the second reduction. Those four steps will continually repeat each time needing a, a, a new malonyl ACP, and that will repeat until we get the 16 carbons for palmitate. But after we get the the 16 carbon acyl ACP, what happens? Well, it needs to be released, right? So the thioesterase um, on domain number three of fatty acid synthase, it cleaves the thioester linkage, right? It's a thioester linkage because of the, that's this linkage here, right? That linkage there. Um, it'll cleave that linkage that's holding the palmitate to the, uh, the ACP. So once it cleaves that linkage, palmitate will be free and it'll be just floating around in the cytosol and probably going to be uh, taken to um, produce some fats. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.